Hey everybody, welcome back. It's business and it's time to cover the Azu new, nope, nope, nope. The Nelson, no, no, that's not quite right. God, that's an ugly ass ship. There we go. Yeah, it's the Lenin. Tier eight premium Soviet battleship. I mean, they're all kind of ugly, but this one's badass, man. I, <laughs> if you haven't seen me play this on stream, I don't know what to tell you. You've been missing out. A um, lot of clips and a lot of stuff that you're about to see is from uh, just recent days as well, but uh, getting into it, we do have the standard Russian issues here as far as the consumables are concerned. Now you have a limited set of damage control parties and healing parties, but they have an incredibly fast reload, especially with the build that I have for this, uh, which is just my standard Russian battleship build, same as any of the other ships that I've ever showed you for the Russians, uh, well, battleships at least, but uh, the healing party, uh, this is actually tied with the Richelieu and the Alabama for the lowest uh, health per second being healed back. Uh, the difference is that those get the ability to have five heals. This only has the ability to have four. And on top of that, we also have the issue of the fact that this has, uh, I think it's the lowest, I think it's the lowest health out of any of the tier 8 battleships. Um, so that's pretty crappy. Uh, overall, the survivability of this ship is definitely an issue, but the armor is actually surprisingly good. I mean, this does have the raised citadel, of course, but we've got this 100 millimeter strip going from the bow tip all the way down. So that's uh, pretty damn nice. And it's only 350 millimeter on the citadel belt. That's... That's yikes, man. So if you've played the Nelson, I guarantee you've been Citadel through the face way too often with that. Now, the thing is, of course, once you get to tier 8, the standard uh, bow armor is 32 millimeters. And unfortunately, the, sorry, the, the port here, the new port, is uh, blocking my ability to show you the rear of the ship there in a little bit more of an efficient manner. But um, yeah, the, the front deck and the, fo the, the fore and the aft decks are both 32 millimeter. There's a little bit of 32 millimeter strip right there. And then this center area here, which is the bulk of the ship, at least the midships, of course, is 45, which is really nice. This is oddly 60 millimeters. And then you know, the usual stuff with the superstructure, but um, that definitely helps out a lot as far as its resiliency, and uh, this is, curiously, it's a ship that can't take a lot of damage, but somehow ends up being resistant to a, a lot of it at the same time. It's really hard to describe, but it all depends on what's shooting you and where they're shooting you. But the turrets are in an interesting spot here because if you see the front face of the turret here, there's almost no angle whatsoever. So that 425 millimeters is probably maybe 440 millimeters of effective armor. Some of the other ships that you'll be seeing at this tier have uh, almost a 45 degree or you know 50 degree angle on that. And that drastically improves their, their bounce ability for shells that are coming in. Um, so, that's important because you're going to definitely be in bow forward situations a lot with the ship and you need to be able to have these these turrets uh, functional to some degree because the, the more they're disabled, the more likely they are to get destroyed, of course. So just throwing that out there. The secondaries, forget about them. Um, just kind of an afterthought. The AA, I'm going to surprise you with something here. This ship actually has the second highest plane shot down for a battleship in the game, only behind the Kremlin. And that surprised the ever-living hell out of me. So between my two accounts with this, I average seven planes shot down uh, a match. And that is way beyond the average for a battleship for me. Um, so I, I really don't know what the deal is, but uh, maybe it's just an easy target, but either way. Um, or people just think it's an easy target. Anyhow, uh, the rudder shift is awesome at 10.8 uh, seconds with the rudder shift mod, but the the overall speed is really bad on this. Um, it's the amongst the slowest. Um, it's definitely the bottom tier in terms of speed for a tier eight. And then the detection is it's it's all right. Um, you know, I'm not running uh, full concealment here, as I'll show you in a second with my captain, but. Um, I did want to point out the two main weaknesses of the main battery will be the shell speed. The shell velocity is it's better than North Carolina. I'll say that much. But uh, it's they're pretty slow. That does help it a fair bit because you are looking at, uh, you know, as far as overpens are concerned and stuff, of course you're still going to suffer immensely from overpens. And look at this gaudy nonsense. This is such an awful camo. It's so glorious, and I love it. But <laughs> the uh, 
the the reload is definitely something that hurts the ship. If it were a standard 30 seconds, that would be very, very impressive indeed. And if you want to have Lennon and uh, Senator McCarthy rolling in their grave, look at this disgusting combination of the Stars and Stripes and the uh, the premium camo. <laughs> so, that's fucking absurd. But uh, anyhow, moving on to the, the actual gameplay here because I want to uh, discuss as much of this uh, as possible while I'm showing gameplay. The the Lenin is is on the same dispersion sort of pattern as the, the rest of the Russian battleships where it's more you know likely to have a really good horizontal dispersion around 12 kilometers and less and then above that it, it definitely starts to become worse or more like the rest of the, the ships. Um, and then it gets worse as it goes up, of course. Uh, it has a very limited range. Um, that's that's definitely something that has been an issue in the past because I can't reach the higher tier cruisers, or even some of the, the same tier cruisers for that matter, um, in some situations. But, uh, you know, the dispersion can roll pretty damn nicely, sometimes even at, uh, you know, ranges above the 12 kilometer mark. But uh, don't expect too much just know that it's still a worthwhile idea to go ahead and throw these shells out even at that range. Um, and just to cover the captain skills, this is the exact same setup that I have on the Kremlin. It's the same thing I would use on the Soyuz, uh, the, the Tier 5, the Ishmael, and so on and so forth. This is just a standard Russian battleship build because it needs it. So um, this is definitely something that benefits greatly from that type of setup. Um, I really think that you could probably get rid of uh, Expert Marksman and go with Expert Loader and the additional fighter for the consumable. And Lennon wants to save this guy. There we go. Get out. Lennon says, get out. <laughs> so, uh, I'm really glad we helped this Eddie out because he goes on an absolute tear in this match. I think he ends up with like 2800 base XP, but how he does it is the spectacular part. So continue to move up here. And by the way, when this this uh, clip first started of, of this match, um, the kiting situation, this is one of the weakest ships in the game in terms of kiting. It is really not set up for it. I mean, any of the, the ships that have the turret arrangements like this tend to suffer immensely when they have to run away. So just throwing that out there for you. Uh, take note of. It is extremely solid in close quarters uh, engagements against DDs. Um, I've dev struck a lot of different DDs, uh, tier 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, I've, I've done that sort of stuff. Um, I never seem to be able to record it. I do, <laughs> of course. Um, I, I have had, I'll, I'll throw this out there, I have had a lot of issues with uh, being able to record and just replays in general. Uh, not this patch, but the previous one. Um, just very inconsistent, but the Eddie threw some torps out there. I get a dev, a dev strike against the KGB, and Ryan stands tall with his Eddie friend. So, yeah, that turned that match around significantly. And, you know, I, I say this all the time to people. Look, battleships are a per salvo experience. They are absolutely amazing when you get a dev strike and a lot of other times they are frustrating as shit because they are not skill based you can you can take that shot however many times over and over again but does that but if you hit does that mean that you're a bad player no it doesn't at all you're doing exactly what you should be doing but rng controls the the ability that you have to influence the match and in terms of damage at least and knocking chips out so um, when that happens, like in this match here, we're halfway through the damn game, and I just finally passed 10,000 damage. Now I'm taking a shot here to see if I can help my Kitakazi over here, uh, firing into the Cyclone. Can't see him? Get him anyways. I probably had better dispersion on that than I did the... Actually, I know I did. I had better dispersion on that than I did against the uh, the Chappie. <laughs> that was, that was uh, earlier, so that's pretty bad. But uh, now we're getting into this situation that I... Oh man, I love showing you guys this stuff. Now, this is, again, disappointing. I, I placed that where I needed to, it just didn't happen. That sucks. But, 
now we've got an Iowa, and we've got some guys behind us. This is really good. This is a situation you don't really find yourself in uh, often enough. <laughs> where, where now there's the Yamato, which is very unfortunate because he can definitely uh, screw me up through the brow. Um, you know, you get into a, a brawl in the Cyclone, and all your teammates are just outside of that 8 kilometer range, and they can't do anything to really help you. Not, not effectively. I mean, hopefully they can get a shot like I just did against that... Uh, that cruiser, that hipper, or whatever. But anyways, um, the Eddie decides to fire. He reveals himself because his smoke detection. So, uh, whoops, that was a bit of a mistake on his end. But um, I am terribly worried about getting sandwiched here between the Iowa and also the uh, Yamato. So I've got my C turret ready to roll. This guy's got his guns ready to roll. There's no way that that dude was more than like two seconds away from wiping me out and getting a dev strike on so super lucky there and i'm trying to crank it as hard as i can back to starboard here to see if i can get along the port side of the yamato and it looks like he's setting up for a ram he doesn't shoot me i did not think that was going to happen i think he was settling for the idea that i would do a ram and now we've got this broadside and this is just Beautiful man. <laughs> oh, and these guys were trying to tell me, or at least one guy was trying to tell me the ram. No way, man. Nah, I ain't about that. <laughs> so we go from 14,000 to 138,000 in the blink of an eye. So that was that was pretty rad. But again, that's that's where this ship excels is right in that uh, you know 12, 13 kilometer and under range, and especially I think in close quarters. And uh, this is, that's not a salvo I expected to to dev strike with. Uh, I thought that was going to be too far behind. I tend to under lead against the Donskoy because it's a much faster ship than I ever seem to give it credit for. And I just really lucked out with that. Now against the Iowa, the only way I seem to Citadel these is if they turn in hard and lift that Citadel up out of the water. And I want you to pay attention to the icons in the uh, the minimap there because you'll see him start to pull hard to starboard and Lennon's got some plans for that. Stand tall my man. Yeah, you deserve it. But that's the thing man, you get close with this. Make people think that you're doing something and then totally do something different. Like right now against this Georgia, I'm hitting the brakes, I am pulling hard the starboard, and I'm Juke. bringing the... Oh yeah, this is a live clip from Twitch because I I definitely recorded it, but I must have deleted it. So anyhow, uh, which is why you get to see the whole hash marks and everything. Bye bye, Georgia. Get out of here. So, God. It just... Damn, it feels good to do this shit. And the thing is, you don't need to have your teammates around you in order to make an impact on the game because there's a weird threat that this ship has to people i don't know why they decide to come up broadside against me i'm gonna get flat to shit here by the curve first that's off to my right but i just 60k this teammate <laughs> like holy shit man and i got my c turret that was just my a and b turret but the dispersion bonus here at close range is insane and i cannot believe I didn't get the double strike there. Just, even if that over pen was a regular pen, that would have been enough. But, of course, against the Yamato, this thing's got a huge nose and is super easy for Yamato to mess with, but he's gone too. And over here, there's a Roma, there's a Yamato, and a Moskva that are very, very dead. But there is a problem that this ship has more so than any other ship, actually probably more so than the Azumo and the Nelson, is that the camera angle is so fucking weird on this. So I, I'm not sure if you know this there, but I actually only fired the A and B turret. I did not fire the C turret. And that's really frustrating because the camera is somewhere between the B and C turret. So the other problem is if you want to shoot the C turret, you're already giving up your citadel because the angle that that has in order to fire, fire all three of those turrets, it makes it extremely likely that 
a ship is going to be able to already start uh, be able to hit your citadel by the time that uh, actually before you get the chance to have your three turrets aiming on a, a target and that is a crucial crucial thing to know when you're playing with this ship and very much so when you're against it in close quarters combat i cannot stress enough the importance of that information <laughs> it's it's the make or break aspect of this ship because of course the citadel is huge and raised and blah 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 right i get that whatever but the difference between the potential of six citadels and nine citadels is huge and of course you're very likely well you're very unlikely to get uh you know nine citadels nobody nobody can possibly expect that right just like i can't expect to get a thirty-six thousand damage salvo against a current one like this but i did so that was rad and then i knew this yamato was here the more important thing to do here was to wait for him to fire give me just a sec to clear that and be able to get that shot off so did what i needed to there we took the uh probably the hardest nut to crack on on the enemy team the remaining enemy team and uh, got rid of them but uh yeah it's it's critical to know this type of stuff with this ship because it will make a difference when you're playing with or against it so now this ladies and gentlemen this is the coup de gras I am super frustrated in this match because if you take a look at my team here, they are bad. They are absolutely god off. And at this point, I don't give a fuck. I'm ready to throw my ship away, just move on to the next match, get out of this match, get away from these players. And there's a Richelieu right here in front of me. We got a Vladivostok right over there. And to my left on the minimap, you'll see an Alabama. Yep, there he is. So we are going to start the game of games. And <laughs> there are a lot of mistakes here. Uh, I will kind of just point out the obvious here uh, right at the start that Richelieu aimed too high and too far forward. So I'm timing this in between. He's uh, cutting his shit back to try to cover his, uh, his citadel there. I aimed a little too far forward, but I had to take what I was able to get because... I have no idea if I'm going to be able to get another shot against him. So for me to get 22k in that situation is a huge plus, and I'm trying to balance my uh, my maneuvers here between the reloads of the Fly the Bostock and the Richelieu. Holy crap, very challenging while I'm still getting uh, dealt with by the Hipper over there, and the Lexington is obviously focusing me, and also the Kaga is going to come after me at some point. But we managed to take down the Richelieu, and now it's a matter of trying to... Uh, manage our angles here against the Alabama and also the, the Vladivostok. So secondaries are going ape shit, of course. I have to allow myself to just sit here and deal with the, the Kaga throwing his planes at me. Um, I'm trying to figure out where I can ang angle myself, like to what level I can angle myself um, and make this work. And luckily these guys are shooting at uh, offset intervals, so I had the uh the light of Bostock shoot too high and then i just waited for the uh um the alabama to fire but i turned off more to my right there to make that a little bit more manageable for myself so um kuznetsov fired off uh cleared off the flooding fires and all that stuff and these guys are dealing with a little bit of uh in well actually significantly increased dispersion against me while i'm also healing back a little bit more I use my last heal heal here. I've got two more damage control parties left. I'm going to take this shot against the Vlad Vostok. I keep going back and forth. Do I want to shoot at the uh, Alabama or the Vlad? I'm going to shoot at the Vlad, and I aim very poorly here. I should have just aimed for the turrets, tried to get some sort of pens and uh, reduce their health a little bit. So I'm now going to say, screw it. I'm going to focus on the Alabama while I can. He aims way too far forward. My secondaries are still firing upon the uh, Vlad here. And uh, so looks like the Alabama, uh, we did disable a turret, by the way. So now we have to deal with less. There we go. That's his rear turret. He's opened up and now he's gone. All right, so now we've got just the Vlad left. I'm down to 2,200 health, and it's time to turn in because if if the Vlad aims high and into my superstructure, I'm fucking dead. There's no way around that. I get set on fire yet again by the Hipper. 
I'm down to 530 health. I've used my last damage control, which I, I can't believe I just bounced another salvo there because he aimed way too low. Again, all it needed was one more overpen. So if he aimed up, that I, my game would already be over. But here I am. And zoom out. And now we're there. How the hell did I get arsonist? And how the hell did I survive that to that point? I have absolutely no idea other than the fact that all I know is that they aimed way too low and way too far forward. But of course this was a loss. But pay attention to the secondaries on this. 42,831 damage from the fires. <laughs> what? Holy crap. That is crazy. And this was actually an amazing match, and I did record this one. It was corrupted to hell for some reason. I have no idea why. I wish I was able to show you that match on its own. It was a crazy, crazy good match. Uh, this one as well. Um, I mean, there were a lot of crazy matches. I mean, this one I had 54 planes shot down. I mean, the Kaga just would not leave me alone. And this ship surprises me over and over again in the ways that it's able to get into these close quarters situations and somehow still come out of it. And yes, like any other ship, luck has pretty much everything to do with it. I mean, you can try to claim that you're super skilled and all that, but ultimately it's still going to come down to luck. And I actually almost got a uh, solo warrior in this match, so that was also a super, super, super tight match there. I can't believe we won that one. Got three dev strikes on this one. Uh, didn't show you any of that because they're tier sixes. Um, Naoba, Farragut, you know, something else too. I can't remember, but, uh, you know, this ship is just, it, it's... It's everything the Nelson could be if it were tier 8, because the, the bow on that ship just makes it so crappy. Um, but I really love the dispersion bonus on this because it lends itself to be... You want to push it in to the enemy. You want to push it into these situations where you're able to exploit these, these players that aren't comfortable in close quarters battle and unfortunately that also means that a lot of these situations will end up in a ram and i i, I think that's the most cheese dick way to play but um i mean do it when you can but you know a lot of players just default to that and they do it from 10 12 kilometers out because they can't damage you so they get frustrated and they're like i'm gonna ram you and uh you know that's two minutes from now when that's gonna happen um and that that's something that you are really limited in, in in what you can control but again it's a battleship you're limited anyways so i think this is one of the most exciting and hilarious ships i've ever played in this game and honestly i fucking love it so that's that folks so thanks for watching today i will see you back here next time take care